Okay, now I'm going to give you an exercise that, uh, that will help to develop the low one, high one agility and dexterity. And it's part of my system of finger independence exercises. I do the exercises for all four fingers and we work heavily and intensely on that in my Suzuki Book 2 course. But I'm going to go ahead and give you the first finger exercises and you can pretty much guess what the other fingers are going to be based on these first finger exercises. Okay, so what we do with finger independence is we exercise the finger that we're working on with each of its neighboring fingers. First finger's neighbors are second finger and open string. So the first finger independence exercises are going to involve one and open and one and two. And you do this on all four strings with a metronome is great. A metronome set at 60 is a great starting point. I'm going to demonstrate it to you without metronome right now. And I first start this exercise in a detache, so no slurs, but eventually if you want the maximum challenge and the maximum benefit out of this exercise, you'll want to learn to slur it. And that's, that's only harder because of a coordination thing, and I'll explain that in a second. Okay, so first let's start with one and open like this. We're going to go one, one. So I did one, four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And see, naturally right now, I've got that contact point on the neck. Um, we'll see if it disappears because I really hadn't thought too much about it. But I bet when I proceed, that contact point is going to go away from the neck. So four beats on B natural and then four beats on B flat. One, two, three, four. Then I cut it in half and I do it twice. Watch this. One, two, one, two. And again, one, two, one, two. And then I cut it in half again and do it four times. One, one, one. So, let me count the number of beats. Each, each, each um, step of this exercise has, I think, eight beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I am maintaining my, that little contact point. But the contact point is sliding. Try not to step on a dog. But I'm not squeezing. Now, if I was even thinking about vibrato in that passage, this would pop out immediately. Because I just know vibrato is not possible with that third contact point. So I'm not saying my way is right, I'm just letting you know that on that exercise I'm maintaining this contact point and it's sliding with my finger. Okay, then, so that's the first way, then instead of going one open, I reverse it and I go open one because that changes it a little bit. Watch this. One, two, three, So that's one and open. I've just done my two exercises. One and open, and open and one. Then I go to the next neighbor, the upper neighbor. So I'm going to do an exercise with one and two. And I like to start with a half step. Um, so I'm going to go B, C natural. Watch this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, That was one, two, 
So now I'm going to reverse it and go 2, 1. And that's way harder. It's hard to move the lower finger of a pair. I don't know why. So, 2, 1. And on that one, I'm tending to go away from my contact point because I need the extra freedom with my first finger. I don't know why. I think the faster I go, the more I'm going to get away from my contact point. Okay, and then that's it. So we've done one and open and one and two. Now let me show you just the slurs because I think you'll find this handy. So back to one and open, we've got, I'm going to slur four beats per bow. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then I'd reverse it. I'd start instead of one open, I'd go open one. One, up my bow change that time. It is a little confusing. And then I'll show you t one and two. Starting with one, two. Ready, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and I, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I'm letting go of that contact point. So I guess I can't really tell you when it's right to have that contact point or not. I'm just telling you that's a huge factor in first finger agility because having a contact point there impacts your ability to move around with, with ease. You want ease and you want fluid motion, but if you're too loosey-goosey, you might, you might just lose your spot and become disoriented. Okay, I got off track. I just did one, two. Now we're gonna go two, one. Ready, and. I started playing out of tune when I let go of my contact point. I'm gonna try that again with my contact point. Ready, and. To me, although it was crowded and a little constricted, I had more control over my intonation. So that's some food for thought and a little useful exercise, hopefully, to get you building some finger independence starting with one. Then you can try that with each pair of fingers. They're simple exercises. Like I said, try it with the metronome on at 60. That's about ding, ding, ding. ding. It's about the speed we were just doing it. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon, I promise. Take care.